Welcome everyone. This is our first installment of Berkshire Education Now. This is a show created um, with Quinn Burnell from Lee Public Schools and myself to highlight superintendents and the work that they're doing and any education um, student driven activity. So with that, we are so lucky on a Sunday afternoon at two o'clock to have four of the South County superintendents join us in the middle of a very chaotic time. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Quinn and he's gonna run through the introductions. Alrighty, hi there everyone. My name is Quinn Burnell. I am a junior at Lee Midland High School and it's a pleasure to be with you all today. Um, we'll start, we'll do a little bit of uh, introductions. We'll start with uh, Dr. Cameron. My name is Bill Cameron, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm the superintendent of schools in Lenox. Lenox is a district with approximately 800 students. It's a K-12 district and uh, we're, we're trying to figure out exactly how to start up a restart an educational program we're very proud of. All right, and up next we have uh, Dr. Dillon. Great, um, I'm Peter Dillon. I'm the superintendent of the Berkshire Hills Regional School District and the Shaker Mountain uh, school union all together. It's about 1500 students um, that I get to work with and support. All right, and we have Miss uh, Regal Buto. Great job. Good afternoon. I'm Beth Regal Buto. I'm the superintendent of the Southern Berkshire Regional School District. We service just under 700 students, K 12. Um, and thank you for having me today. Of course. And we'll, uh, we'll finish off with Mr. Richard. Great, right, Quinn, thanks so much. Mike Richard, superintendent in the Lee Public Schools. Uh, we service approximately 700 students in a pre-K to 12 uh, district. And uh, as, as Dr. Cameron noted, uh, together, uh, we're all trying to figure out uh, what does education look like uh, for, uh, for, for all of our students right now in the spring of 2020 as we, uh, as we navigate these, these unprecedented times. Right, definitely. Well, thank you all for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with our first question, which is just what's your general take on the COVID-19 crisis and it having to do with, you know, the public education system in our county? We'll start off with Dr. Cameron. Thank you, Quinn. <clears throat> I have never seen anything like this before. Um, what this reminds me of, and I've only seen that at a distance, is what happened, for example, in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, uh, there was physical damage there, which was profoundly disruptive of the educational programming in New Orleans. We don't have the physical damage, but we are closed and are likely to be closed for the rest of this school year. And trying to figure out on the, on the run, as it were, what we can do to get educationally valuable programming back up and running on relatively short notice is a real challenge. We're, I'm sure we're all, we're all working on it, uh, you know, with, with our staffs and trying to engage teachers and so forth, but it's, uh, I've never seen anything like this before. And I've seen a lot of things uh, in my life. This is not one of them. Right, right. These really are truly, you know, unknown times will thank you uh dr dylan yeah it's hard to it's hard to follow dr cameron uh <laughs> obviously these are uncertain times um i think the hopeful thing that's coming out of it is is people are coming together and figuring out ways to support each other uh and, and i hope as we as sort of he was saying but as we change the wheels on the airplane as the airplane's taking off uh, the way we're going to be successful is is by is by coming together around all these challenges Definitely, definitely, I agree. Uh, Ms. Regal Buto? Sure, um, I don't like following any of these people. Um, I am newer to the game of the superintendency um, and uh, I keep saying uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna get the hang of this and, um, and I think I'm never sure I'm gonna get the hang of this. Um, it is like nothing I've ever seen. Um, it's totally unprecedented. Um, I think what I'm most grateful for um, is um, how amazing everybody has been from the administrative team to the school community in coming together and figuring it out because none of us have the answers. And um, when, when um, 
you know, everybody has just been willing to jump in and figure it out together. And you can see we're all here on a Sunday afternoon because um, it's so important to us to make sure that we get this right and that everybody's safe and well. So, um, you know, there are no words. I just hope that we're doing the best we can to support everybody. Thank you. All right, Mr. Richard, what's your take? Uh, Quinn, thanks. Uh, so, you know, I think it's interesting. Uh, we always talk in education about the fact that we're trying to prepare students for jobs that don't exist yet. Um, and I, I think about uh, us and, and how we're going to manage to do that now and how uh, as well trained as all of us have been, uh, we're now trying to accommodate uh, the unknown in so many different ways. And, and COVID-19 has really uh, brought uh, great minds together to think about creative problem solving. Uh, but from uh, from my seat, what I've been most uh, impressed by is the way that the uh, the, the communities uh, in in South Berkshire County have really come together, pulled together, worked with each other uh, to make sure that we're sharing resources, sharing ideas, that we're collaborating um, to uh, to meet the needs of students and families um, who are all being impacted. Uh, by this. So our primary uh, responsibility is always to our students and our staff, uh, but I'm finding all of us branching out and really uh, working with, with other stakeholders in our communities each and every day to make sure that um, we're taking care of each other. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I was watching the Lee School Committee, uh, one of the Lee School Committee meetings from a couple weeks ago, just last night, and it's, it's kind of crazy to, you know, see where we were you know, two and a half weeks ago versus where we are now. And just from my personal standpoint, I can really see all the hard work and dedication that you guys have put into putting in, you know, a plan and making sure that us students really do feel cared for. And we all really, really do appreciate, you know, seeing where you guys are coming from. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Wadsworth for our second question. Excellent, Quinn, thank you. It's hard to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the questions uh, that we have is, what is the plan going forward? What will education look like in your perspective districts for the next six to 10 weeks? And so, um, and I realize that is on the, that's an on the fly answer, question and answer. So um, we'll start with Dr. Cameron first. Well, <clears throat> what, what we're going to do is going to depend basically on what the faculty uh, is prepared to do. We uh, have a number of classes, especially at the secondary level, where various things like Google Class have been used sporadically by teachers. Um, what, we're, what we're trying to put together uh, is K-12 programming. The Department of Edu uh, Elementary and Secondary Education wants to refer to it as remote education as opposed to online education um, because they think it gives more flexibility to what the what the solutions would be but um, what we need to do is work closely with the building principals and with the teachers we have no curriculum department uh, in Lenox so it's basically the the central office staff the principals and the teachers who are going to have to come up with uh, online interactions, and we're going to have to accommodate a number of um, really uh, challenging uh, student subgroups, students with IEPs, very young children, and I know everybody is going to be facing these same issues, but we have to provide not only uh, regular education, but we have to make sure there isn't anybody left behind because of lack of access uh, because of special needs that they may have educationally that are going to be very hard to meet online. Um, so it's going to take some ingenuity. I, I'm fortunate, and I think we probably are all in agreement on this, we're fortunate in having creative and very dedicated and skilled faculty to, to rely on in, in making these programs work. But where we are is, is still a work in progress. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Cameron. Dr. Dillon, could you uh, tell us what Berkshire Hills is planning? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to echo a little bit of, of what Dr. Cameron shared. Uh, to date, we've been focusing on a couple things. Uh, we wanted to address the food insecurity issues first uh, mm -hmm. and make sure kids and families are getting fed. And I think we've done a good job of that. Uh, and people are taking advantage of that. So I'm happy about that. And I'd like to thank 
uh, our food service people and our community volunteers have helped out there. The next thing we've been focusing on the last two weeks have been around reaching out to all the kids and families, uh, regular communication, uh, staff, counselors, all sorts of people checking in and, and making sure people are okay. Uh, and I think those relationships are gonna drive a lot of the work going forward. And the next thing we're doing is really pivoting towards this uh, shift in educational approach that, that Dr. Cameron's talking about. Um, and it's heavily dependent on, on teachers and paras and principals coming up with great ideas. Some of it will be online, some of it will be home. Um, a, a while ago, and there's tons of stuff on the internet and we're probably all preoccupied with it, but, but somebody posted something about um, 10 years from now when we look back on this, kids will, they won't remember what they learned, but they'll remember how they were treated and, and how uh, the context was. And I think that's a really important thing. So we're going to try to set people up for some academic growth, uh, but we also want to set people up to live balanced and, and productive lives. Uh, and this is a super stressful time, right? People are losing their jobs, there are issues around food, uh, there may be issues around rent or homelessness on and on and on and then on top of all of that you put two three four six people in a home all together not going out much and, and that gets complicated too so there's academic work but there's there's work around relationships and 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 how we thrive through all of this and with a little luck the weather gets better and we spend some more time uh, outside appropriately socially distanced <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, Beth, you know, I, I can't say your last name because I, I messed it up. So, totally Beth, <laughs> Superintendent Beth, could you yeah, yeah. No <laughs> tell problem. us your, your plan for Southern Berkshire? I think it's I think it's very similar to what my uh, my colleagues have said. We started first with safety and well-being, and um, making sure that people had enough to eat, that there are um, counseling supports available, that um, that people felt secure that um, you know they knew they had a job that we were uh, working um, to to keep this um, moving forward and whatever that looked like, and then we moved to more of um, a stay well and here's some enrichment types of opportunities that um, people can do together at home in a variety of ways. Um, but I feel like the um, the important thing that we have to recognize that we're dealing with at least, um, and I'm sure uh, everybody else is, is the challenge of um, connectivity and accessibility and equity. Um, and for us, that has been at the forefront of every plan or discussion that we've had. Um, and when I reach out to families, um, the very first thing we're doing is connecting with each and every one of them. Where are you? Is everybody okay? Um, what can we do to help? What accessibility do you have? Do you need a device? Do you need something? So we've been doing, that's, that's been our main focus. And then we're really working towards like everybody else, what is this quote remote learning plan gonna look like over the next um, however long? So um, that again is dependent on faculty and staff and what they're comfortable with because the reality for us is that it's going to have to be something that's a combination of online and something that's um, manually put together because there's no way to meet all those wider requirements. And, um, and we do want people to stay healthy and well, so it's not going to be um, this driving, you know, exact educational day that we've been having before. So um, it's a balance and a work in progress, and um, it's kind of exciting work um, and incredibly challenging. So uh, I'm looking forward to working with the faculty and staff and building that plan going forward. Thank you so much. Sure. Mr. Richard from Lee Public Schools. Andrea, thanks. So, you know, the, the focus for me from, from the get-go back to March 13th, when we first let our faculty and our students know that we were taking at that time a two-week hiatus was uh, to focus on on mental health uh, that it's very important that our students our communities uh, our staff are are very much um, in tune to a routine around school and what that means for everyone and so uh, my message to the faculty was make sure you're reaching out to your students and your families and letting them know that you're here for them uh, emotionally and, and, and uh, educationally as appropriate so that they 
um, have that connection. They maintain that connection because I know that educators are such an important point of contact uh, for our students each and every day from, from the youngest, uh, our pre-kindergartners, uh, right up through our, our seniors. Um, they build connections, they build relationships, and it's important for us to make sure we maintain them. Since the 13th, as we've continued to uh, watch the plan change, uh, I've uh, made sure that the, our community knows that our plan is subject to change and has to be fluid. So we have uh, set up systems where we are adapting to uh, families who have uh, online uh, availability. Uh, as Beth points out, we know we have a number of families who, who don't uh, have connectivity uh, and may not have devices. So next week we'll be uh, handing out uh, Chromebooks uh, to families who are in need of them so that they can access um, the internet. We also make sure that we remind families about um, connecting with internet providers because we know that the, there's a responsiveness on the part of businesses uh, to uh, provide some free access for families who may be in need. But we also realize uh, all too well that, that in the Berkshires, uh, you could have the, the best plan in the world, but if there is no connectivity where you are, uh, we've got to make sure that we provide some more traditional uh, resources. So we've been um, printing uh, resources for students to put in their hands. Uh, and, and my hope and expectation is that somewhere down the line, um, our, our libraries maybe get a chance to open up uh, on a limited basis so that some of our students can, can begin to access some print resources on a more regular basis. But, you know, to Dr. Cameron's point uh, and, and Dr. Dillon's point about uh, the subgroups that we're trying to service, our English learners are certainly going to struggle um, our students with identified special needs are going to are going to struggle um, so we need to try to support them as best we can my concern is what what are the longitudinal effects uh, of this break in, in schooling and so we're going to be able to get students um, moved on to their to their next school year uh, and that that's going to be all well and good but in five years or ten years from now uh, what are the effects of this break in schooling going to be um, on our student population? Obviously yet to be determined, but I'm sure that there are minds much brighter than, than mine at, at uh, research colleges and universities who are, who are digging into this to start, um, start analyzing what the effects are going to be. Awesome. Thank you, all of you, for those answers. And at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Quinn for our final question. All right, so for our final question, we have, how do you feel about the current senior class and the accommodations moving forward? Like, what's the plan, you know, for, for students who, you know, potentially this, this is, you know, the end of their high school career? We'll start off with, uh, with Dr. Cameron. Thank you, Quinn. Um, I, I really have to confess, we don't have a solid plan in place for what to do with seniors. Um, part, of, part of what we have to do is not just provide um, sound educational activities for, for these young people, we also have to find some way to celebrate their completion of their high school uh, careers as they move on to whatever they're going to after high school. And my own inclination is to try to find out what the seniors themselves would see as an appropriate way. Now, there may not be any anything close to unanimity of opinion about that, but um, I do think that that we're going to have to to involve the um, the seniors in deciding what we're going to do, so that they don't just leave as of the 13th of March, and that's the end of everything having to do with high school for them. We've wiped out. It looks like athletic activities. We've wiped out uh, significant field trips and, and events at the end of the school year that seniors traditionally have been involved with. They're almost certainly not going to take place. So I wish I had more details, but I need to talk to a lot more people before uh, we decide what we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Dillon? Um, again, I'll echo what Dr. Cameron said. I really like the idea about reaching out to seniors. Uh, I think it's important we, we provide them with, with at least three opportunities and maybe more. Uh, one is some celebration of all the hard work 
that they've done, uh, whether it's academic, athletic, social, extracurricular, however you want to slice it, I, I think that that work should be honored. Uh, I think a big thing for our seniors also are the community scholarships that happen. Uh, so some way to recognize them through that. And then a really important part of senior year is, is creating some social time, uh, whether it's a prom or, or something else. So I don't know what that's gonna look like uh, going forward. I, I know many universities are planning virtual graduations and that's sort of okay, but it's sort of a rip off. So maybe we, we do that in the short term to stick a Band-Aid on it. And then a, a little later when, when the public health people say it's safe, we, we get together. But I think those three things, the, the graduation, the, the celebration of their work through scholarships or other things, and then some time for them to be social. So this might be the year that we do a, a big barbecue for the seniors in August uh, instead of what we typically do in, in early June. But, but time, time will really tell on this and hopefully seniors who are watching this or, or their parents can, can share some good ideas with all of us about that. Right. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, really, you know, take into, take into, you know, your, your thoughts about not only just the academic part of it, but really, you know, celebrating their entire high school career. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Regalbuta, what's your take on this? So I think it's super important. And I just had a conversation with Mr. Carpenter, who is the secondary um, principal and um, we have a variety of ideas we're kicking around um, as ways to honor seniors and their entire, you know, school experience, um, whether it's on a personal basis, um, some kind of um, social media type of shout outs, um, you know, something that is um, more personal in a way. And I'm, um, I'm really open to um, having the conversations about being sure that those from or graduations or uh, those types of activities happen if they can um, later in the summer, if that's where it has to be. So um, I, I think I want to stay really open to that. Um, and like everybody else said, we, I need to hear from them. I want to hear from them what, um, you know, what we can do to um, celebrate their, their achievements over um, the last 12 years. And um, I have a niece who's a graduating senior and, um, I'm hopeful that we can all find ways to um, to to really celebrate their experience because um, this is um, this isn't what I think everybody was hoping for during this time. So more to come, of course. Right. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Richard. What are your thoughts? Quinn, thanks. You know, it's been uh, very important to have um, you know Principal Burgenti at, at Lee Middle and High School has has communicated. Uh, this week with with the seniors to make sure that they know that uh, one way or the other we're, we're going to have some form of a, a graduation ceremony for, for for our seniors. We think that that's a rite of passage that they deserve, and we need to make sure that we can meet when that happens is is yet to be determined. But we're going to make sure that we provide those opportunities uh, for students to come together. You know the the important um, points that others have made about the these these what is the social uh, component to a senior year is is really important we need to make sure that students do have a voice in in how we do this um you know i'm considering ways for us to uh highlight a, a you know a student of the day as a member of the senior class between now and the end of the school year where we can um uh, we can call them out on, on social media and give them an opportunity to upload uh to our website a message that they want to share uh, to our uh, to our community, so that they they can be a part of this uh, in a way that's that's obviously safe and appropriate. Uh, but we're going to be creative, and I, I appreciate uh, hearing you know Dr. Dillon talk about uh, you know a barbecue, and and maybe it is in August, and and you know Thanksgiving we know is always a time when classes come together, and I can only imagine what that celebration is going to look like for uh, members of of the class of 2020 this year as they all come back from college or work experiences or perhaps service in the in the military, whatever they might be doing. Uh, but we're going to make sure we're, we stay in tune and in touch with them uh, to support them again, you know, not just academically over these next couple of months, but socially, emotionally, psychologically, 
uh, so that they can make the most of their uh, of their senior year. We all know it's a, it's a special time, and and we've got a role and a responsibility to uh, to do our part in that. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you all for being with us today. I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Wadsworth to close us out today. Thanks, Queen. This is so much fun. It says you are muted. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the technology and how we're living. Um, so thank you all for doing this. Um, and thank you for being the leaders in our community. The four districts that represent you right now in this video that the public will see are the four leaders that are going to take your children through this. And we're very appreciative, Quinn and I, for your leadership. So something fun, I didn't tell you we we're going to do this, but um, <laughs> as I'm sitting here, and my husband walked by and said, what are you doing in the corner? Um, with technology and the fact that we have to communicate remotely, quickly tell us all where you are right now. <laughs> I'm in the corner of my living room. <laughs> Quinn? I am facing a random wall in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dillon? Uh, I'm in my son's bedroom that has good <laughs> Wi-Fi access. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cameron? I have a little office in my in our in our home so that's where i am perfect superintendent beth <laughs> well i am in my brand new uh bedroom hiding from all the rest of the noise in the house so <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and mr richard i'm just sitting at the the kitchen table here <laughs> nothing too exciting excellent well thank you it, it, it's a new way for us to connect with each other and it's it's it was heartwarming to see all your faces today so i appreciate that on a personal level um, with that, uh, this is this new show Quinn and I have come up with, and, and e L e help me, Quinn. Elias. Elias. I want to call him <laughs> Elias. And you will see Elias next time. We're going to do a segment on college, and we hope to talk to the college presidents and what that looks what that looks like for the college students right now and their their quick change. And um, so we hope to do this more. And I would invite all of you back. Um, to connect with the community again. And we can do this as many times as you'd like because there are people who don't have internet and this is a way for them to see you and your faces and your leadership um, on the TV. So with that, I thank you all for meeting on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, be, be well. Safe. Thank you, Quinn. Have a good Take one. Care. Take care.